Hello everybody and welcome to another Lightwave tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to animate any propeller, whether it's on an airplane, uh, any vehicle really, uh, a boat with a motor, anything that you want to animate that spins over time based on speed and, and uh, movement of the actual object that it's parenting to, that it's on. So I'm going to go ahead and just open up a little Cessna 172 model here. It's a pretty basic uh, model, nothing crazy on the detail. Just brought it, bring up some blueprints and uh, model away. It uh, takes a few moments, but I'm not going to touch on how to model this right now. We're going to want to animate this propeller uh, in, la in layout and always be stuck to this body. As you can see, it's a, it's a separate layer. And now my floor, my ground layer. and. Basically, we want to make this propeller stick on this body and move based on speed of the actual parent, or in this case, this this Cessna 172. So, uh, right off the bat, you want to, when you're doing anything with dynamics and stuff like that, you want to achieve items to scale because the bullet uh, system and world properties in Lightwave uh, are, are so realistic where... Unless you're actually modeling to scale and weight and stuff like that, uh, you're going to see how it actually affects your your animation. Nevertheless, let's uh, move forward here. So, first thing I'm going to do is I want to confirm that uh, all my layers here are named properly. So, I just hit F7 here to bring it up. So, uh, that's my Cessna 172. This is my propeller. I'm just going to call it Prop. That's my ground layer. And that's my body. So, you name the layers for ease of everything in, in layout. So, I'll send this object to layout, and right off the bat, there it is. Let's just zoom in right here, and let's just go into the properties. I'm just working on something before, and it kept my attribute standby. So, here we are um, in layout, and right off the bat, we see... A Cessna body and the propeller. It's in two separate layers. I can go ahead right now and, and spin this and you're gonna see that that's not what we want. So let's undo that. First thing you want to do is go to your scene editor and click on the layer that you want to get stuck on. You can do this to the wheels as well but right now we're focusing on the propeller. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit M that's for PC and Mac, and we're going to go ahead and parent this item with the Cessna 172 body, and that's why it's key to name your your layers, or else you're going to be stuck. And right off the bat, you can see once I move this body, that propeller comes with it, and that's exactly what we want, or else this effect goes nowhere. So let's put that back on the ground. Um, that's pretty good. And the next thing you want to do is set your pivot point or anchor point. Meaning, in Modeler, you could do this as well, but I always found it easier to do this in the layout portion of Lightwave, and that's just me. I mean, you could do it in Modeler and it carries over or, or not. So, in order to achieve that, you just go to the Modify tab, and you don't want to move the object, you want to move Pivot. And we're going to do that by clicking on Move Pivot and making your anchor point as dead center as possible. You can switch your views here, get it bang on right there that's where you want it to spin and you can go back to move so you don't ruin anything else okay now that we have this propeller let's animate a little quick little push here on our Cessna body let's just move let's make the timeline 300 frames and let's zoom out here and let's just move forward right on that z-axis axis and there we go now you can see that this propeller is not spinning how is that even happening I don't know it's it's not gonna happen in real life you need that prop to spin for you very easy click on the propeller layer go to the motion properties of the propeller click on add modifier and I went to the motion properties by clicking M on the object. Very simple. Add modifier relativity. And 
We're going to go to the relativity options here by double clicking on that. And we want to confirm that the propeller, if I click Y here, so you can see it spin, at the bottom left corner there, you're going to see that the bank is moving. And that, in fact, is that axis that we want to make relative to the body based on uh, movement. So we want to confirm that because uh, based on your item uh, or, or, or our object, sorry, it's it's different sometimes. So let's just delete that keyframe because I have auto key on so it animated it. Now, so confirming that it is in fact the bank, um, we're going to look at the B attributes of our propeller here. We're going to go Dr. Wheel Rotator. And Dr. Wheel Rotator by default is going to put one meter on the wheel's diameter, but this is going to be our controller um, as far as speed's concerned uh, with our prop. So uh, we're going to go pick item and we're going to pick an object that we want to be relative to. We're going to go ahead and click OK. And it generates a little script here for us. Uh, he's a good doctor. Dr. Uh, Real Rotator. Fantastic. So, there you go. So he's moving. Uh, the object is moving, and so is the propeller. If it, w if it, so let's go to frame, I don't know, 320 here, and let's lock onto this object. And from frame 300, when it stops, the propeller is going to stop because the plane in fact is not moving from keyframe to keyframe so if you go reverse there we go it's spinning right but one thing I realized the propeller is not going to spin left when it's going forward it's going to go right so how do you change that very easy go back to your propeller layer click on motion by hitting M and instead of plus 100 or plus 1 we're going to go minus we're going to lock that in and now the propeller is going to be moving right with the plane based on speed of the plane. If it was a quicker keyframe or a closer keyframe, it'll it would move faster. And as you can see, that my pivot isn't a hundred percent dead center. And eh, no, you know what's pretty good. Uh, uh, no, it's not. My pivot point just moved a little bit, but you get the idea. That's how you make it spin. Now, these revolutions are obviously not fast enough. I mean, a plane's revolutions are ridiculous. It's like 18,000, I don't know, per minute. Now, we're not going to do all those rotations in this 3D world. Of course we're not, because we have a little friend of ours named Motion Blur, and during your render, that's what you're going to want to uh, use to really, really sell the effect. Now, Let's just move forward here in uh, the in Z space. I'll, I'll take that off. My world's really big, so it's just going to take some time to move it there. Sorry about this. Stand by. I should have reset all my display options. So here we are in front of this plane. And uh, here's what we're going to do. Let's, I'm on a laptop here, guys. <laughs> so... There's a propeller spinning. Now, let's just go ahead and render this dry. Let's see how bad that is. Cool. No nothing, no nothing. So, here's what we're going to do. Well, first off, I'm going to just do some ambient inclusion by just going to C for camera, and then, sorry, Shift C to select my camera, and then P for properties. I'm going to go to uh, my global illumination and click Enable Radiosity. And right off the bat, uh, I like doing backdrop only. And my rays, I like going up to, I don't know, 190, and my multiplier is set to 50. Those are just my basic uh, global illumination radiosity settings. And now I'm going to go to my property settings again and just make it a little bit wider, just so we can see this properly. And go to Window, Backdrop Options, and we're going to make a backdrop of pure white. And that's what we're going to use in our scene to uh, for our lighting right now. Uh, it has a pretty good effect. Ambient inclusion is fantastic. We just have to do one more thing, select our little light here, go to these properties, and we're not going to affect the diffuse. So, let's just go ahead and render that right now. Uh, there we go, some radiosity happening. Cool. 
that's a little Cessna, 172. Now, the propeller in the frame looks like it's just, it's absolutely stuck there. So we're going to go to the camera properties. So shift C, bring up the camera, and click P, and here we go. Motion effects, motion blur, photo reel. We're going to want a blur of, I don't know, 125%. And let's just give some passes of uh, AA5. And let's render this frame out right now. And it's going to do its thing. Stand by. I'm on a little laptop. Boy, it's taking long. It's okay. Almost there. Uh, there you go. That's the effect that you want. And that looks good. You could do this with wheels. You could do it with just about anything. Um, anything that you need to rotate or pivot on an axis, you can use the Dr. Uh, Dr. Wheel Rotator Tool in Lightwave. That's it.